was most of your learning back then self-taught through research or did you lean on a few mentors that helped shape your career? Yeah, so initially um, we had a really good uh, strength conditioning coach at Glenorchy. Um, he was, he was, I guess, my first mentor. And from there, he was really good in regards to mindset and just getting out, getting it done, um, just probably building my mental game. In regards to, I guess, learning all the fundamentals I needed to know to be a successful coach, um, that's when I moved to the VFL and I just had access to just so many coaches. Um, obviously, at Williamstown, we had four strength conditioning coaches and nutritionists, physios. So just by having that many people around you, it was kind of like my own little mastermind. And because I was obviously working in my own practice, I just wanted to learn as much as I could. And I mm. utilized all those people that I met along the way to um, really propel my own learning. How did you start? Was it Instagram? Was it Facebook? Take us through where's the best place to start, do you think, when you want to start developing your own brand? Look, um, in regards to social media, it's, it's one of those ones where if you're not fluent with it, you're just better off starting as a PT, jumping into a gym, getting the gym, obviously, to get you some clients. From there, it's completely up to you to get results. I, I truly believe results are gold and, you know, referrals are gold. And if you can get people results and you can guarantee them if you do your program or if you follow the steps I'm going to put out for you and the plan I'm going to lay out for you and you will achieve what you want to achieve, you know, there's, there's nothing else that you really need. Um, that's, that's my honest belief in the coaching game. Yeah. Uh, and, and like you mentioned, work on your weaknesses, get an understanding of those weaknesses and top them up. And um, was it when you're sharing that knowledge with um, the, the guys in the Tassie program now, um, what are some of your key pillars and key areas of focus from an athlete development point of view? First and foremost, I would say leg strength. Um, it's one of those ones where when all our state teams go over to Melbourne, Perth, South Australia, you know, just the overall leg development, um, kids and players from other states, you know, you can tell they're doing leg weights. You know, they're strong, strong for the, their lower body their ability to win contested ball, stay strong over the ball. Um, it's just so important, especially in a physical game like football where, you know, being controlled over the ball, being controlled even when pressure comes your way is a very vital part of the game. 100%. And, and going back to your personal training, strength and conditioning career, what, what are some of your fondest memories where you look back at, um, yeah, you, 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 you're proud about those moments throughout your coaching career um there's two main ones uh i once had a client um he was a dad he was 50 and he came in and yeah he wanted to wanted to lose some weight he wanted more energy he wanted to actually be able to finish this spartan race and he wanted to fit back in his old clothes and wanted to feel feel good about himself again and yeah when we first started he's like yeah i'd be happy with four or five kilo and i said nah Let's go for 30. 30 he can't, he, yeah, he just looked at me. He goes, huh? And I said, yeah, we're going to do it in 16 weeks as well. And he goes, really? I said, yeah. And, um, yeah, uh, we didn't quite make it there. We missed out by 0.4 of a kilogram. But the following morning um, after the 16 weeks, he went on holiday. The following morning, he weighed in at the uh, specific amount. That's probably one of my most fondest memories, yeah. Wow. What are some of the biggest challenges dealing with a long-term injury? Obviously, this is something that happened last year for you. Um, talk us through, yeah, that challenge. I guess in regards to injuries like that, it's, it's, a, it's a big one. You go from flying, you know, you could have had the best pre-season in your life. You could feel the fittest, the strongest of your life, and something like that happens in it changes the whole course of, I guess, what you need to do. You know, the first time I got out of bed, I could barely walk. And yeah, there's like certain times throughout the rehab journey where you can't really see if things are going to get better. And especially with ACLs, it seems like you get better for a week and, you know, you might 
like stand on something or move incorrectly, your knee swells up and it seems like you just go backwards again. Uh, how did you learn to cope with that and not get overwhelmed and stressed um, with those setbacks? Um, a bit, bit cheesy, but I started practicing gratitude. Um, I had this journal. I think I've got one here. It's called the, the inner journal. That's right, the inner journal. So I just started journaling. Stephen Morks. Yeah, they're really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm an avid reader as well. So I read The Resilience Project. I was reading a heap of stuff, just more on my mental game, just how to become a little bit mentally stronger. And, yeah, I just found that, I guess, being grateful for the things that I have and the things that I've done and, you know, all the great things that, have, that I've experienced along the journey so far, just reminisc- reminiscing on those things and appreciating the things I do have. You know, I had money. I lived near my parents. I had friends that were willing to help me out, bring me down food and... Yeah, you know, without all those things, it would have been even harder. What's your favourite inspirational quote or life motto? Um, I actually got it written up on my wall over here. It is, <laughs> to be a true teacher, you need to be the living embodiment of your teachings. <laughs>